for it. So good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Audrey and I'm with the Microsoft Flow uh, product group and I work in the citizen application platform. So in the citizen application platform, we focus on both Power Apps and Flow. I've been asked specifically today to give you guys a quick get started on Teams plus Flow. So this will be a very focused introduction, but I will cover fundamentals, how to start with templates, show you a little bit about interactions with conversation objects and give you some resources for building skills. So in the Teams instance today, I've uploaded a couple of things. I've uploaded a PowerPoint that I'm not using this morning, but it is kind of like a handout that you could use to share the basics of flow on any topic at all. Um, again, today I'm focused on Teams and there's another file. If you could try and find it, it's actually a little text file and the little text file will be used as we make our flow together. So I'm hoping that you'll join me and make a flow with me this morning. And so I'm going to give you an action item already. Go ahead, kill me, right? If you could go to your mobile phone and just download Microsoft Flow. If you don't have it on your phone already, if you could add it, because we're going to do a mobile uh, uh, flow today. And so in order for us to test it, everybody would have to have Microsoft Flow on their, on their actual phone. Um, Make sure you type the word Microsoft in front of Flow because that's a very popular term apparently in the app store. In the app store, um, and this will work on Android and iOS, whichever one you have. It'll even work on iPad. No worries. Um, so do that anytime you want while I'm talking because we're going to get to making our own app. Okay. So as you can see, I just have a screenshot. Uh, I, my PowerPoint just has a screenshot of beautiful teams and then the four things we're going to cover today. The rest of this demo is going to be 100% live. So no deck, right? You have the deck attached. Feel free to use it. All right, so we're going to go straight to teams in real life. And I'm going to start with just clarifying a few things you would want to do to get started. So you want to make sure that people know that uh, how they use flow with teams. And basically, um, just like you have apps, so I hit the three dots here and I hit more apps. We have apps for many different things, but just by uh, filtering, you'll see the Flow app. So it is a good idea to start by installing the Flow app in Teams. Um, you can add it for yourself or you can add it to a team um, specifically. And then once it's added, you'll be able to open um, the Flow app and it has two components. It has a bot and an app. So let's look at the bot first real quick. Because, you know, nowadays it's all about AI and bots. And so a lot of people appreciate the fact that they can create these automation scenarios in Teams. And I know it's one of my favorite things to do as well. So as soon as you get into the bot, you can ask the bot questions. And usually what you'll see on the bottom of the screen when you first install it is a little bar that says, what can I do? And you see it here on the bottom. I'm not 100% sure if I can zoom. Let me know if you can't see or if it's too small or any of that stuff. Um, but if you notice down here, it says, what can I do? Because I'm in the conversation right now with the flow bot. And so it's gonna tell me what it can do. You can, you can say learn more, you can list your flows, you can run a flow, or you can ask to describe a flow. So we're gonna do two things today and I'll let you have the time to explore the other two later. Um, if you have not installed the flow bot and you, and you have your laptop and you can install it, that would be helpful today as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on list flows and all it's going to do is put that in my conversation bar. And so I'm gonna hit send and it will show me all the flows that I have that can be run by the bot. And so there is some constraints here that I want you to be aware of when you're working with customers, and that is only two kind of flows can be run by a bot. A flow that's triggered on a schedule, you can force it to run now, or a manually triggered flow button 
as long as it has no inputs. And what it does immediately is it looks at the environment you're in. In this case, we're in the default environment and it says I can run these three flows. And because those three flows comply with the two conditions, triggered on schedule or manually triggered with no inputs. So I have this little flow that kind of checks for connection errors. I don't know if you've ever noticed this, if any of you have ever worked with flow or um, in the past. If you could let me know in the chat if you've if you've if you've never used flow, so just put no. But if you feel like you're pretty comfortable in flow in the chat, put yes. This will give me an idea of how the audience balances out. Um, but the connection errors just checks and see if I have any errors in my connections. If it does, it sends me an email with the list of connection errors so that I can go fix them before I run into them. Because I don't like to be interrupted while I'm doing things with connection errors. The second thing is a weekly RFI report, and this is something you can configure. This is a flow that goes to SharePoint, looks up all the RFI data, and says, okay, let me give you a list of what is, uh, uh, what's the count of these RFIs. I'm just keeping track of what's open so that we don't have too many open. And then I have a third one, which basically just clears my screen. Because here's the thing, when you're talking to a flow bot, and I'm telling you guys this. So a lot of what I'll say to you, I wouldn't say to customers. I'm trying to enable you to kind of prepare your demos and kind of wow your customers. But uh, I, the flow bot can't be deleted. So I have a flow that actually puts a big picture and kind of clears the space so that when I do a demo, they're not looking at the last demo in the bot. So I'm going to try. Uh, number two here and basically what you have to type is run flow and if you start typing run it'll put it there and you can just hit tab to finish and then it wants the number so I'm going to go ahead and run the weekly RFI report and just hit um, the send button and notice that it tells me your re your report has been started now it will always say that and the reason it's saying that um, is because what if my workflow, like for instance, connection errors, is sending an email or notifying someone else or creating an approval in a Teams, I wouldn't be able to tell. So the flow bot validates to me, you, you, go ahead, I started your flow. But then I actually made a flow that posted an adoptive card as a bot to myself. And basically, it lets me know how many RFIs are closed and how many are open. And we're going to do something very similar to this together. So don't worry, you will learn how to do that. All right. Now, notice when I post these adaptive cards, and I don't know if any of you have ever heard of adaptive cards, but what I love about adaptive cards is they adapt. So the word is 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 appropriate. If this was a dark UI, it would adapt to that dark UI. Um, if it was in uh, another software, it would adapt to that software. So adaptive cards adapt. And so we'll we'll do that in just a few minutes, so you'll see how it works. So basically, this is like me working with the flow bot, and the flow bot's just running these flows directly from Teams. And sometimes you want to do that either because you're handling something with personal productivity or you're doing something for the team, you can run a bot. One of my favorite bots to set up and run is a welcome bot. So let's say I'm an admin of a Teams instance. I can go ahead and set up a welcome email and maybe even a welcome card like this for a new member in my team. So as an admin, I'll add the member and then I might uh, run a bot that would send them a welcome message. So that kind of thing is really easy to do. And I, I love the way uh, flow is right here with us in teams. Now, if I click on flows, actually what you'll see is the flow uh, maker portal right here embedded into teams. So I don't actually have to go to flow.microsoft.com. I can actually build and run flows right here. Um, I can also create from blank or create from template. And one of the wonderful things I love about creating from template, which we will do um, as well, is this is like the fast track to value. So you want to help your customer get value quickly. The quicker they can get value out of running flow in Teams, the more likely they are to be sticky. 
But if you make it a long winded learning process, which means, you know, you start here and you start talking to them about what a connector is and what a trigger is and what an action is. Why don't you let them learn the value before you go into a learning initiative? It may enable them to get sticky faster. All right, so templates are a great way to kind of get that quick value. So all I'm doing is clicking on the bottom to see all the templates. I want to see them all. Notice that what we've done in the Teams UI is we've added the templates in such a way that it focuses on Teams. So we have literally hundreds of templates, but in this UI, it contextually constrains it to templates that relate to, um, to teams. And what I love about this is these are not like your baby flows. Some of these flows are quite sophisticated in their nature. They cover things like IoT, RSS feeds, uh, JIRA, um, severity alerts and cloud apps, uh, Zendesk, ServiceNow, uh, Azure, uh, Azure um, What's the new name for Visual Studio again? Uh, I forgot. I always forget. I'm trying to get used to it. Azure DevOps. And then there's Project Online or PWA. So you can see that these, these uh, templates are connecting to a variety of cloud services. And this enables you to integrate those cloud services directly into your Teams instance. Um, even uh, one thing we'll do together, let's do a form together, okay? Um, there's SharePoint, there's Planner, there's OneDrive, there's Wonderlist, there's push notifications, as long as you have the mobile device installed on your, the mobile app installed on your device. Uh, Dynamics, of course, MS Soft Marketing. I don't think it has finance and operations, but we have the others. Power BI, approvals, Twitter, Staff Hub, Outlook, you got everything here, right? And basically, you don't need to know how to use Flow with these. So let's use this one. Let's suppose, because I was talking about RFIs. By the way, RFIs stand for Requests for Information. And I have a background in consulting um, for construction management, dams, bridges, tunnels, wastewater, all that kind of stuff. I got into construction and uh, supported a lot of public initiatives for MIS. And uh, contractors have to submit what's called a request for information so that they can get clarifications. Um, and so let's try this template out. Now in advance, I've already made a form in um, our wonderful forms. If I go into forms, oops, nope, I'm still making good. If I go into forms, you'll notice that I have a form here called requests for information. And I built this in Microsoft Forms. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. You just say new form, give it a name, and you start adding questions down here. And I think even my niece who's seven years old could probably build a form. That's how easy it is to do. So basically what I'm saying is that when this form is filled in by somebody, I want to notify the team, all right? So maybe there's a team that tracks this. So basically I'm just gonna click on this template and I suggest, I know this is a big, um, a common flaw. I suggest that you encourage your customers to read the description. They don't like to do that because, you know, they see that big blue button, they want to click it right away. But it is a good idea to read the description of the template because very often it'll give you dependencies. Like it'll say, okay, so if this is related to SharePoint, the SharePoint list must have this column or that column. So always read the description. It, it is always a helpful thing. This one's pretty straightforward. Notice also that I have connections. Now, I don't know whether any of you on the phone has multiple Office 365 accounts, but this happens a lot, like in consulting and, and as a partner at Microsoft, I had five or six Office 365 accounts. So be careful if you have multiple accounts that the accounts that are being signed in here are the ones that you are in the tenant of, okay? Because it is possible to create a, a, um, a connection to a different tenant. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue, and then I'm going to find myself in the template. And look, it's all filled out for me, basically. All I have to do is kind of give it the parameters, right? So it's asking me to pick a form. So anywhere there's a drop down, 
I'm going to look. Now, by the way, if I don't notice what I need to fill out, it's not a big deal. Because as soon as I hit save, the flow checker, we have a flow checker is going to jump in and say, hey, you're missing something. And it will actually help you find that something you're missing. OK, so it says form ID. Don't let this confuse your customers. Just pick a form. You don't need any ID. It will show you all the forms that you currently are using. And so you can select that them from the list. All right. A lot of people get stuck at that. Um, so now I want to know what teams am I going to post this in? Let's post this in there and let's post it in um, drawing RFIs. We kind of have something for that. Now, what am I going to post here? Um, a new response came in about, and then I have in the in the form, I get these dynamic fields. So here's why we're called flow, by the way, because starting at the top with a trigger, as you add actions, every time you add a different action or these rectangles here like this, you the data flows from the top down. So that what you end up with is a lot of dynamic content that's coming from the actions above you. And since our get response details is what gets the different pieces of the form is above me, I can use any of the content from there. So I'm actually going to say what the question is related to. That happens to be a question, right? Then I can save because basically I've done it. That's it. This is the beauty of templates. They just work, right? So now what we're going to do is take ourselves to the drawing RFI teams. And that is here, I believe. And then I'm going to go and fill out a form real quick here. So we're going to go in here and we're going to say Jane Doe and she's at doe at me.com. This question is related to this is what I used in the post specifications. And then I'm going to provide a spec number and uh, section three looks incomplete. Please clarify. I could have also put the, the question directly in there as well. And then I'm going to set a deadline. So you can use any part of your form that you fill out. And now I'm going to submit that form. And what's going to happen is the flow is going to launch. And notice right here on the bottom, a new spec came in, a new response came in about specifications. So it's really easy to do that kind of thing. Now, by the way, that form also has a workflow that starts an approval when something comes in. And so you can post approvals that people can interact with directly in Teams as well. John will send over the missing pages, right? Somebody forgot to put the pages in the binder, something like that. And then you can submit. So you can respond. Now imagine if I was on a Teams, if I was on a mobile device and I had the Teams app, not the Flow app, but the Teams app downloaded on my phone, I would see this exactly the same way in Teams. And approvals are also an adaptive card of a different kind. And so I could respond to this approval and also know that a new response came in from my mobile device if I was a frontline worker. So it's a key scenario to enable people on the ground who might need to know about things, right? You can enable these kind of uh, posts that go straight to them or straight to a team. Now, since this team channel owns RFIs, it makes sense that we'd push it into the team, but we can also push approvals to a user. So let's take a look real quick here um, in Teams. I'm going to go back to my Flow app. <coughs> and I just want to show you, um, this is the Flow we just made just now. And you'll notice that it succeeded one minute ago. And you can always check your Flow's run to find out how it ran. Um, I don't know if there's anybody on the call that knows JSON, just type JSON in the chat. I would like to meet you. Um, this is all driven under the under the hood by JSON. So if I open these, what I will be able to see is the literal JSON that was output. So what these have is inputs and outputs in JSON. But don't stress about this. 
it's not even necessary to like call it out to your customers, but it is something you'll want to know because in some cases you can you can um, troubleshoot by understanding the JSON. Um, and those are more advanced scenarios that we might not have time to talk about today, but I'll make sure that you have the resources there in the deck. And also feel free to check out my YouTube channel. Just look for Audrey Gordon. There's my shameless plug for my YouTube. I have a lot of videos from all different um, different kinds of approaches. Is there a question? Okay, someone's just talking. Yeah, I think someone's Maybe I'll, I'll mute, mute yourself. Yeah. Quick, yeah, quick question. I do have a question, okay. Audrey. Uh, yes, and that sure. is, um, there is uh, often a request to forward email uh, to a uh, team and um, or to post it, uh, a message that comes from email to a channel. It seems as if, uh, you know, for example, newsletters are often distributed via email yes. and people are yes. wondering, how can I do that in Teams? Well, it seems as if the forms approach you just described, if the, you know, form was used for the newsletter, it could yeah. be used to post the message. So that would be a nice workaround feature. Yes. Yeah, very good. Very good. So you can post anything you want from anything you want, you know, any. <laughs> so basically you have over 270 connectors that you can connect to and then take that data, like maybe um, the body of an email and put it into a Teams post. Um, you can take the attachments to the emails, put them in SharePoint. We can't attach on Teams right now, but at least you could you could upload it to SharePoint and then provide a link to it, um, to the user. A uh, couple of ways you can handle that, but definitely the information from an email can actually be transferred to a post on Teams, a card on Teams, or a user on Teams. So all that's possible. And Excellent. I suggest you. that you guys, no, no problem. I suggest that you try out the templates. Don't be afraid to click. I mean, the worst that could happen is you say something funny to your team, but it's, not it's it's best to practice so i love practicing letting you know though little heads up you are at microsoft so you may want to create a demos.microsoft.com tenant for the sake of demoing like you can see i've done here this is megan the reason being is that certain things you will not be able to demo from the microsoft tenant because of our dlp policies for instance, this one here, I can't use at Microsoft because it will give me an error that says I'm not allowed. We are not allowed to mix business data with what's called non-business data. So if you ever get an error about a policy, it means that Microsoft has restricted you in that area. And I will also ping into the Teams instance today, the link to where you can learn all about what we can and cannot do at Microsoft. I believe it's M M MS Protect, so AKA dot MS, MS Protect, but I will check it and put it in the link. So you might want to create your own demo environment so that you would be able to do more, right? Show your customer more. Um, another thing I often get asked is how do you help your customers set up their own DLP? Because di by default, everything can be sent everywhere. So you might want to, um, talk about DLP one day, maybe um, maybe I can come back if you have an interest in that. All right, so I'm gonna keep going and I think this is a good time to kind of talk about some core things in Flow, just so that you understand the pieces. Uh, so I'm gonna click on the button that nobody wants to click on is the create from blank. And to be honest with you, I don't really think you need to click on it unless you can't find a template to get you started. So even myself, and I consider myself an intermediate to advanced user, even me, I don't want to start from zero. Why should I if there's something that'll get me started? So check out the templates. If the thing you want is not in there, then go ahead and create from scratch. Um, also remember, you can go to flow.microsoft.com and find many more templates. And the key here is that these are way more than Teams. So another trick I like to share is if you just type whatever you use the most. So if you have customers that are using Azure resources, type Azure up there and you'll get all the templates that relate to that. IoT Central, Active Directory, Azure Blob, Cues, DevOps, so you get all this Azure goodness in our templates and it just, you know, it scrolls for a while. 
So uh, don't be overwhelmed, though. You can start with teams. And then when you're ready to find something more interesting um, to do, or maybe you want to combine teams with some other things, just recognize that you can actually type the connector up here, and it'll give you all the templates that have it. Or you can use this row right here to search by a particular topic, like mobile. These are all these buttons that we're going to do together. OK, so. Um, can you check that everybody has actually uh, downloaded the app? Yep. Um, and I'm going to start by kind of pointing out this is the flow maker. It doesn't look a lot different from the flow maker um, in flow, but basically you must start every flow with a trigger and then after the trigger. So like let's let's now I can I can start by selecting a connector, which is this section right here. And notice that Teams is one of our popular connectors. If you click on that, it'll constrain you to Teams, which gives me a chance to show you our Teams triggers and actions. So the word trigger means initiate or start or kick off. It's kind of like those of you that are server savvy, it's an event. Right, so you're saying based on this event that somebody does or that's on schedule, maybe it's a it's a scheduled flow, this this will trigger, and then you have actions, and these are all the things you can do after you trigger. Right now, of course, they don't have to be one to one, so you can have a trigger in SharePoint and then use an action on Teams. So it doesn't have to be one to one, but remember that your flow must start with a trigger. So I'm going to choose. Uh, when a new channel message is added. So you notice that I can do either added in general, right? Or directly mentioning uh, me, okay? So I'm gonna choose a new channel message is added. And then I'm going to pick the team that I want this to happen in. So I'm gonna pick that same team we had before. And let's pick that, let's pick, uh, let's see, how about, web and social trends, right? I'm just not risking uh, launching another flow. And now that I have a trigger, so we know whenever something is posted, a message is posted in this team on this channel, so it is specific to both the team and the channel, now I can do anything I want, all right? So I'm gonna keep going in teams, but understand that I can use any of the actions across any of the connections to do whatever I want. Um, but I'm going to choose post a reply to a message. And whenever you see V2, V3, these means these are enhancements. And the reason why we don't like roll them all up together is because we don't want to have a breaking change. So if we think that our change to V2 could impact somebody, then we'll create a V3. So for the most part, you can head towards the highest V you see. Um, but uh, that's a general practice. You can try them all and see what you get. Sometimes they're different. So here I am, I've posted, I'm gonna repost a reply to a message. Now I am able to use these kind of dots up here to find out information. So if I click this eye, it tells me what this trigger is gonna do. If I click learn more, it actually takes me to a document that breaks down this template in much more detail. But I will warn you, technical people get this, but the average business user struggles. So you may have to help them. Um, we are trying to improve our documentation so that it's more user friendly, but take a look at it, give me feedback, let us know what you think about it. We also have in the three dots, the ability to add a comment and to rename. So as well as delete, peek at the code behind and look at other settings. Now we don't have time to go deep in settings today, but I will point these two out as relatively important. Sometimes you want to rename this so that it matches your business scenario, right? So when a channel message is added with the keyword, right? You might actually want to specify a keyword, right? web right now this action is going to happen in my next condition but at least it lets everybody know this trigger is not going to occur not going to do anything important until it sees that keyword web 
The other thing you might want to do is add a comment. This only applies to this channel. I, I, I don't know what I would want to say, but by adding comments, you help your um, anyone that follows up on that flow to kind of understand how that flow is going. So if nothing else, I think renaming and adding comments is a very useful thing to do. Now I'm going to add a condition because remember I said I'm going to only respond to a message with the keyword web. So I'm going to add a condition here and I'm going to click in the first where it says choose a message. Now, I mean choose a value. Notice that when I click in that box, I get the dynamic tags again. And if I want to get what was typed, literally grab what was typed, but notice I get all this stuff. I get who it's from, what device they're on, what the importance was, what the mentions were. Woo, lots of fun stuff in there, right? But I'm going to choose message body content, and then I'm going to choose contains, and I'm going to type web. All right, so I'm just, if that's true, what I'm going to do is just post a message that gives them um, the website. So maybe that's maybe we have a list of things that we code, and if you type this, you'll get that, you know, and you'll you'll share with your team what their codes are, so that they can kind of sneak in their own like system of getting information. I'm going to post a simple message, and this is going to the same. Um, sorry, did I forget? Yes, we're going to go to the same uh, uh, team and to the same channel. And I'm just going to post. Um, a little message here. So like every morning, let's suppose we change which website is handling tickets today. So they could just type web and find out, oh, here's the team that's handling those tickets today. And it's just like a quick little thing they can always kind of do or post. And I guess I left out some stuff here. Let's see. Uh, I think I got, oh, uh, nope, that's good. This is good. This is good. And then I might add a terminate here. Not necessary, but sometimes because I don't want anything to happen over there, sometimes I'll add a terminate. Ah, I see. I have something down here. So I'm going to delete this because I never used it. All right, and then save. Now, so basically what I did was just make a flow that has a trigger and it has an action. So this is my trigger, this is my action, but I added in between a condition um, because this doesn't have like a advanced. Some of them have advanced where you can query directly from the trigger, which is always best whenever possible. Um, but in this case, we don't have a query, so we'd add a condition if the message contains web then it's going to post this. So if we go to that team, make sure you've saved. And sometimes what I'll also do is shorten this name. Um, identify uh, page duty for web, for instance. Um, and then that's the name of this flow now. It's saved. If I go to that site, to that um, place, and I just put web, Again, because I've configured it this way, it needs to be literal. It takes sometimes up to two minutes for this post to occur. So be aware that performance can depend on a few things. It could depend on um, their SKU in Office 365. I think the home SKU might be a little slower. It could, it could depend on what's going on right now in the environment. Like if you're dealing with SharePoint Online, how is SharePoint Online operating today? Is it slow? Um, is it fast? You know, so a lot of that can occur. But what I noticed that it will always occur within two minutes. So I don't have a clock visible on my machine. But at 840. Hey, Audrey, I've got a quick question for you. This is sure. this is great, by the way. Um, Good. The question is um, this feature of Teams, um, excuse me, of flow within Teams is not fully fully available yet for our government customers. And we're hoping both commercial and government customers watch this video. So quick question, if they just create if they just create this flow within uh, the flow app on the GCC um, version of Office 365, then the flow app will 
excuse me, within Teams, they can use the Flowbot in order to um, display this, correct? Yes, if they're in Teams and they can get to the Flow app here, so I'm just going to go back. If they can click on Flows and they see this, then they can do what I just did. That's great. Yeah. So this is why I'm working here. Um, I'm trying not to go over here so that you can so that you don't you don't expect to see this portal. You can do everything I'm doing today from flows. From right here in your app, but you need to and notice it's it is posted and notice it's 840. So remember I said two minutes. I was spot on. I find that to be average. Um, and again, it depends on what you're doing. So if web goes and queries a SQL database for 5,000 items, you know, you got to be careful. Um, if your query is long winded, then your answer will be long winded. But at a minimum, I notice it takes two minutes, right? Um, so keep that in mind. Now, where was I going next? So if you don't mind, I'm going to go back to that flow again. So I'm just going to go back to the flow and notice how I'm just hitting the three dots and hit flow, but you can also embed flow in your teams. So if you go to your teams and you hit your tab up here, you can see that flow is here and you can embed and notice it says you can create and manage and you can launch with a bot. So you can embed it in your teams. You don't have to go back and forth to the app. I just do that to keep my particular tenant clean. Um, so you guys ready to build a flow? What do you think? Let's yeah, this do, is great. okay. So we're going to do a quick flow. Now, by the way, um, you can also build flows directly from your mobile device. So flow enables you to build flows live on your mobile device on your way to work in the bus, right? But when you're building flows on the mobile device, you won't be able to get to advanced expressions. So anything where you need to type an expression will have to be done within the um, the flows here or within the flow portal, okay? But we're gonna make a mobile app together. So what I've done is I've given you also, if you go to the Teams chat, you'll see there's a SharePoint site there. That SharePoint site is shared with all of Microsoft so that you can follow along with this and create your first flow. OK, now I'm going to see if I can start with a template here because I know we do have one. Let's see, but it may not show up here because it's uploading to SharePoint. So we're going to do it from scratch. I think it'll be a good lesson for you to learn. I'm going to create from blank and feel free to follow along on your own computer. And I'm just going to name this upload and post photo. So we're going to upload a photo from our phone. So we're going to take a picture on our phone, not yet, but when we run this flow, and then the picture that we take is going to be uploaded to SharePoint. And after it's uploaded to SharePoint, it's going to post a card on Teams with that picture in it. All right. So this is the first flow we're going to build, and it's really easy. So we're going to start with our built in connector, which is the flow button for mobile. By the way, these buttons are digital buttons, but you can also do physical buttons. Um, and it's amazing. I can't wait to get a service dog that because the service dogs can actually tell when your blood sugar is low and they know to bring medicine or whatever they have to do. But if you can teach a dog to press a button, a physical button, it's about an inch in diameter in this case, through Flick, then you can actually train a dog to run workflow. All he has to do is press the physical button and it will run the flow that's been configured. So really cool thing to do one day. Um, can't wait to find a, a dog that's friendly to being taught how to click a button. Um, so I'm gonna choose this trigger. And here's the cool thing about this trigger. It actually has inputs, which means that on the mobile device, when they press this digital button, they'll be prompted if needed. And so in this case, I'm going to prompt them for a photo. So I'm just going to choose the file and type photo there. And I'm also going to prompt them for a reason. And the reason is because on SharePoint, I have a custom column called reason that I want to be able to sort, filter, and query on SharePoint, OK? And I can even drive different workflows based on the reason, 
All right, and notice if I hit these three dots, I can add a drop down list of options and I'm going to put in three. So I'm going to just do general progress photo. I'm going to do environmental and I'm just hitting tab environmental compliance issue. Um, let's do uh, endangered species sighting endangered. This is all construction stuff um, just for fun sighting and then um, incident, right? So this is the reason the photo's been, been taken and the reason it's being uploaded, but this will create a tag in SharePoint that I can use for any reason I want um, in SharePoint. Or I can connect Power BI to the data and get a trend of how many photos I have for endangered species and how that's trending and so forth. So really cool stuff when you're using the whole platform. Now I'm going to do my next step, which is to get that photo on SharePoint. So I can type SharePoint here to make it easy for me to find the SharePoint um, connection. And then what I want to do is a create a file. So I'm just going to click create file and then it gives me a little bit of a tip here. You can pick your 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 site. If you don't see it, you can click enter custom value and copy and paste the URL there. So got it, makes sense. I like picking, I don't like copying and pasting. So I will pick a site. Now the site you're gonna pick is the one that's in Teams because you won't have access to Megan's site, but I set up a site called Parameters, and actually it's in French, it's Parametre, and the Parameters site is open to all of Microsoft. So you're welcome to use it in this demo. Or you can use your own SharePoint site. The only thing is you might not have the reason column, okay? So I'm gonna pick, um, I don't, oh, there it is. I'm going to pick my launch site and then in the next one, notice all these red dots, these red asterisks means you must give me this information. Like I can't create this file unless you give me this information. Um, the library for you and for me is audit photos. So I select that. I'm just going to name this file um, uploaded and a timestamp just to keep it unique. And then I'm going to dot. I'm also going to put the extension on this because I want it to be optimized in ping, right? And then it asks me for the file content. Notice that as soon as I click there, it shows me that uh, prompt that I uh, put in the, in the button. And so I can just choose the photo because that's the photo. All right, so now we have a photo. How do we update that property? I'm just going to type the word properties because I just want to upload the properties, uh, change the properties of that file. So I will do, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do get, I meant to do update. Let's see, let's try again. If you make a mistake, you can see how easy it is to um, delete what you put there and put another one. Happens all the time. I got to learn how to spell though. Proper, there we go. Update file properties. So you want to use because we want to update and we're going to choose the same site, the same library. And one day I'll talk to you about how you can use variables here, but I think for today um, we're going to just um, not talk about that because it make it too deep. So you can just reselect it. And then for the ID again, because I've clicked in here, flow is very helpful. It's going to give me the dynamic content that applies. And usually the description is written underneath all of them so that you can kind of validate that you've got the right thing. OK, and then um, I can do any number of things. I can just um, I can update the title. How often is it that we have photos or documents that don't have a title? So I could make the title. Now notice that in that button, this is the fun thing I want to tell you about buttons. There is a whole bunch of free data you get because they're on a device. We can pick up the coordinates if they allow location to be uh, to be captured. We can pick up the country, the city, the date, the longitude, the latitude, the full address of where they are, um, the postal code, the state, the street, the timestamp, the username, the user email, all of that we get for free. So I might put in the title whatever I want to kind of build this against, but I'm going to put country region, assuming that I'm going to filter by country region maybe. Um, and then I can always, uh, at the reason is where I'm going to put that, sorry, I clicked wrong, where I'm going to put that thing that we added together, which was that drop down reason. And so now we've got a file 
and uh, we've got it got the properties from our button last thing we're going to do is tell the team about it now what i have also put in the teams um how do i do that again so what i have put in the teams is i have put a uh whatchamacallit so i'm going to just save here so i don't lose what i just did i have put a text file in teams let's see if i can get there here it is um nope that's not it so do you mean a Go. post do you mean a post so i put a file so if you go like chat with the meeting uh let's see teams calendar i'm trying to find the meeting so once i'm in the meeting i can chat with participants and then you'll notice at the very top i added some files this file that's called adaptive card cheat um what you'll want to do is download it and then copy what's in there um and i will show you how you do this on your own um but it's a good idea for you for today to just copy and paste it. So you're copying everything from the first squiggly to the last squiggly. Um, sometimes what I'll do to make it easy to manage is I'll put it in OneNote, I mean Notepad, because you know why I love Notepad for copying and pasting is because it strips all the formatting. You guys in customer service probably already knew that, but this schema is going to be our adaptive card. So I'm just going to copy that and um, if you're working along with me, you'll want to do that as well. Then I'm going to go back to flow and I'm going to add a new step called um, post and adaptive card. So post your own adaptive card as a flow bot to a channel. So we're actually using a bot here. This is not me posting. This is the bot posting. And again, I'm going to choose the same information as far as team and channel. Uh, where do we want to put this? Let's put this in design. So, or wherever you'd like to put it, whatever team you have. And then in the message, paste that text. So this card is a little bit challenging unless you've done some JSON or uh, adaptive card samples. So it's just adaptivecards.io. And all of these samples are in here. And I think I used, I uh, can't remember which one I used. But you can pick any one of them and then click try it yourself. You can design it in here, which is something you can learn directly on this site. And then you just copy and paste the JSON. So you don't have to know JSON. You just have to know how to use this little designer here. Um, after, you, after we've done that though, we're gonna inject data into this. So right here, I had placed thumbnail large. So when I'm designing anything that I wanna pull in as data later on, I will put a placeholder there. And I'll put it in some clear way so that I'll be able to spot it in the JSON. Because once you bring it into flow, then you'll need to take those placeholders and replace them with dynamic tags. So in SharePoint, each picture has a thumbnail. So I'm going to put the thumbnail large tag right there. And then I have another um, area here, which is the link to the item. I'm going to highlight that and put link to item. Now, in both cases, be sure to leave the quotes around the tag leave the quotes around the tag um, and just replace the capital letters that I put there. When you're building your own, you'll make up your own system of how you can catch the places where you need to insert tags. But this is very powerful and it's a lot of fun, okay? So now I'm gonna save this. And um, I could do this on my phone. You can test on your phone right now, but I'm going to test on the screen so that you guys can watch me test. And you can test by clicking test, and then I'll perform the trigger action. Because this is the first time we're testing, we'll have to use the first radio button. But later on, I highly recommend using data from previous runs. This way you don't have to keep creating test data. You can just reuse the test data from before. So I'm gonna click save and test, and it's gonna prompt me. If you're using your phone for this test, as well as the desktop, the first time you do this, make sure you allow your location. And the reason is because this is the only way they can get like the longitude, latitude, and stuff like that. If you don't wanna allow, just recognize you won't get all that GPS data. 
All right, so now I'm going to accept my connections and also allow the location and I can if I'm on my phone, I can either take a picture or I can go to my picture library and grab a picture either way. So I'm going to grab a picture of one of my favorite things to give you some insights on me. I love fountain pens. I'm a real fountain pen geek. So this is my collection of Namiki Falcons. And I'm going to just say this is an endangered species because we don't have enough fountain pens in this world. And I'm going to run this flow. OK, now because I click text test, it's going to put me into a mode where I can actually watch this flow run. So I'm right here in Teams still. I haven't left Teams. You'll notice that green check mark. It means that part is done. All right. Now it's run the whole thing, which means that in SharePoint we should have that. So let's go to SharePoint. Let's go to that library. Um, audit photos. And if I. Um, there you go. You can see the ones that I tried yesterday just to practice. There it is. Now I have this in tiles mode, which enables me to look at the actual photos, but I could also put it in list mode. And the beauty of the list mode is now I can filter sort by reason because that's why I did that I wanted to be able to triage these photos by their type. And so I can leverage that. Now, if I go back to Teams, to my Teams instance, um, and we put that in design, you'll notice that that adaptive card is right there. Now, at the bottom of the adaptive card, we configured the button to launch the SharePoint photo so that they could open the file in SharePoint directly. So, um, if they want to see a bigger picture. So basically what you saw there is that we used a button on our phone to upload a file, tag it, post it on Teams, and provided a way to go look at the entire um, file. Um, and so you could imagine, I'd like you to just get your creative energies flowing there, how many things you can do with this kind of a scenario, with SharePoint, with dynamics you can every time a lead is created in dynamics you can notify a specific team every time a ticket is created in zendesk you can post it to the to the appropriate service um, escalation so it's just so many options here um i should ask if there's any questions because that was pretty deep thank you that was awesome audrey and yeah let's do questions we only have a couple minutes though and i've got a hard stop at okay. uh, another conference Start another call starting in this conference room. I'm open for Sorry. questions. Hey, I have one question here. So sure. uh, uh, it is amazing actually, and just wanted to uh, confirm. Uh, we can see that the Megan Brown used Microsoft Flow to automate the notification. Is there any way this can be removed? So uh, you know, so many customers will ask you that. I'm gonna let you know right now. So your point spot on as to what people are gonna ask. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say no today. Um, I don't know whether we are what we're considering about doing like this. I know that this was a whole lot of user research. It went into um, our integrations and all bots basically identified the, the source of the bot. Um, and we did want to identify who who uh, initiated this. Mm -hmm. If they want to hide the who, for instance, they can always use a an account that they that they right. designate for this purpose. Uh, mm -hmm. That's more vague, but it has to have a license. Um, but the fact that it's saying that flow is being used and it links off into the flow, we cannot remove that now. OK, mm -hmm. um, and I, but I, I will continue to share that feedback because we've heard it before. Yeah, sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Anyone last else? Question. Sure. Uh, was it that easy that you guys don't have any questions? OK, then I sh next time I'll be a little rougher on you, right? I was Thank too easy. Thank you so much. I <laughs> really appreciate it. And I know people will probably uh, email you with follow up questions. This has been awesome. I learned a lot and I uh, I can't wait to get started using it. And I think our customers are going to love this as well. Thank you so oh, much. Yeah, it's awesome. You guys have an awesome day. It was a pleasure to meet you and I hope that you enjoy your Power Platform experience. All right, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.